Hey everyone, it's Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I did a video a while back where I was trying to finish some unfinished projects and I finished four. This one, this one, this one, and a larger journal. I want to do flip throughs of these three real quick. Well, you know what I mean by quick. And that's what I'm here to do. So let me start with the smallest one first. Well, actually, no, let me start with this one first, sorry. This one, um, there's filigree, a filigree piece I've had for a long, long time on the end. I did a hidden, um, a hidden three pamphlet stitch binding so I didn't have to look at the strings because I didn't want to glue this on top of the strings and the strings be showing, well, the stitching from the three hole pamphlet stitch. This is from a stamp that I carved I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, the Celtic Knot. And then I stamped it with brown, uh, what was it, what brand did I use? With a brown, here it is, Saddle Brown stays on, on top of dyed paper that was already stamped with something else and I didn't like it, so then I went over it with the brown to give it a different look. All right, so these are stamps and magazines and then um, th I think these are Tim Holtz words. It's just a little bitty collage, glue book, whatever you want to call it. I never know what these things are called. All I know is I just have fun making them. I use up a lot of the images that I've cut out and saved and hoarded and it's just silly to keep hanging on to them. I might as well use them in the book. So that's what this is, is just using up my painty papers and different things like that that I've already got on hand. These are stickers. And the thing about these stickers right here, they came from, I think these came from Dollar Tree, but they had that sponge uh, dot underneath them to give them a more dimensional look. So what I do is I peel that off pull the sponge part off and then glue the fish back onto, cause it's a two part fish, there's color. There's the same fish done twice and then it has that, um, that's, that dot, pop dot, giving it some depth and elevation and I peel it off and then I glue the two uh, pieces back together again because if I put everything in there that had dimension in it, this thing would never close at all. So that's what this one is. This one had a pop dot in it. This had a pop dot. This had a pop dot. This is just torn paper and the rest of it is painty paper that's torn. Oh, and this one had a pop dot in it. So these were all basically pop dot images, but they're done with um, envelopes, book text, painty papers, and then I ripped the painty papers to look like um, seaweed. This is just off the back of a calendar. I can't remember where I got this lovely building, but I really like it. And these came from Carla at Caged Fish. She stamps st some of her favorite stamps for me, and then she does them with embossing, and I just love them. I love touching them. They feel slick and soft and raised up. I just love those. I don't emboss nearly enough. This is the tag off of Something that I bought says the spring shop. I'm not really sure. I can't remember where I got it, but I really liked the tag because it had these cool words on it and it was a really cool color. Then the, this is a sticker that somebody sent to me. Um, this came off blocks from Dollar Tree, a box. Like I said, it's envelopes, painty paper, book text, magazine images that I've been hoarding. And I have such a good time making them. It takes a lot of time to dig through all that stuff when you start saving it and the containers start getting larger and then you don't use any of them. It's kind of silly. It's like having beautiful dishes and never eating off of them. I think I heard Oprah say one time that what's the point of having china if you never eat off of it? Don't save it for special occasions. Your life is a special occasion every day and you should eat off those beautiful dishes. So I decide instead of saving my favorite images, I'm going to start to use them and start to use my painty paper that I really like. It's just silly to save it. 
Can't take it with me. Might as well use it up while I'm here, right? I like putting words on my stuff. I like the word open and it says this is my happy place. It's kind of hard to see because it's in silver writing, but it says this is my happy place, Paris. This one's done in blues. This right here is bubbles from the fish, you know. And then this came from a rubber stamp. I I think this is a rubber stamp that I carved and I um, stamped it on a piece of extra cardstock that was in my drawer, outlined it in white, uh, white jelly roll pen. It was so much fun. These eggs came off of um, a, what's it called, Graphic Fair, Graphics Fairy. And I did a book on eggs for Carla at Caged Fish and I printed off the images and I glued the images or printed them off on cardstock and then cut them all out and put them right here for the bunny rabbit to have all his eggs for Easter. Man, that's a nice looking piece of candy. And I'm thinking it weighs like a couple pounds. <laughs> or it should at least. <laughs> uh, let's see, who gifted me this? Gina Aaron's gifted me this panda card. It was so cute. And I went to Daiso to look for them again to buy a whole bunch of friends some. Not to be seen, not to be found. I wanted this one to look like land and ocean because the turtle kind of straddles both worlds. I mean, maybe it's more like a tortoise, I don't know. The background is this is one of Gina Aaron's um, stamps from the collection that has the scribble words. I love this stamp makes great backgrounds when you do jelly printing or if you stamp it, use it for rubber stamping. It's a great, great stamp. And there I've used it again because I really did love that, that stamp. And I think the cactus images might have come from Gina also. Okay, so that's this book that is finished. And when I did this, I had three signatures in here, and I ended up really having five, but I can only fit three in here so that I could at least kind of close the book. So then, if y'all remember, I was doing a large copy journal, and I had two signatures left from this other book, and decided to use the leftover copy stuff from the larger journal into the two signatures left from this one. So I made a belly band. And um, this is part of a stamp set I got, and I don't know where I got this wood coffee time. This came off a real uh, Starbucks coffee cup, you know, the sleeve. And that's it. There's the belly band for that. These two were digi, digi, um, digi prints that I bought off of Etsy, out of the Etsy store. The woman who sells these does all kinds of lovely prints on the back of what looks like really um, miniature book pages and dictionary pages for the background and then the, this is on top of it. I love her stuff with the coffee beans and all the coffee background paper. So I tried to tear all the images. Carla tears them and they look so good when she tears them so I tried to give them all ragged edges. There are envelopes here, painty paper, Oh, look at this. Oh, I must have, I missed an image here. Oh my goodness, I thought it was done. This again is the digi paper off of Etsy. She had large bean paper and small bean paper and then, you know, the bean paper that's spaced out as coffee beans. Then I did I did did a lot of this with coffee dyed text and coffee dyed computer paper. This is a miniature paper doily. 
I don't know where I got it from, but I have a feeling it came from Happy Mail from some of my friends. They always send the coolest stuff, I swear. They're junk, and their cast-offs look way better than the stuff I consciously save. This is also a digi print that came from that same woman who did the coffee beans and the coffee cup with the dictionary stuff in the background. I bought these digi prints for a pocket letter swap where the theme was coffee, and I cut them into the ATC sizes so that they would fit in the pockets as the background to whatever I was going to put in front. And then um, she had this great coffee grinder, and it's a jar, like a ball jar, an antique ball jar with the metal lid on it as the coffee grinder to go into the cup that measures how many how much grounds you have in here. Love those antique looking things, those vintage things. And I like doing stuff in color spreads, trying to make color from one side almost look like the same kind of color theme onto the other side. There's another, there's the same one that I had in the beginning. This was a sticker. This got, was caught, uh, uh, cut off of, I think that was that, um, shoot, you know that corrugated cardboard that thing they put around your cup so you don't burn your hands? I think that's where I got this from. Okay, so that's the other two signatures that should have gone in this one. So that's a total of five signatures right there. Boy, that would have been one fat book, huh? Then the last one also has a belly band on it. This one was a book that I had started and never finished, and it was about postage. This was a stamp, and I'm not sure if I did this one or if Carla from Caged Fish just did this one from um, the Imperial British East India Company, and it is embossed. And it's a lovely teal blue color. This has, uh, I mean, this is, I think it has one signature in it. I don't think I did more than one. Oh, no, this is a zine. Well, no, not, you know what? I can't tell you what this is. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, this was two zines that were glued together and put in the book. That's what this is. Yep, okay. So it was two zines, and I took the insides of two zines and glued them in here together. So it's all just any kind of miscellaneous postage stickers, or um, I got a catalog that had all kinds of postage and antique vintage postage for sale, which I wasn't going to really buy. So I cut all the images out of the catalog and used them as if they are real stamps. And a lot of this is Tim Holtz. Um, ephemera stamps that I have, rub-ons, painty paper. I love the rub-ons. This is a sticker from Hobby Lobby, I think is where I got that from. And the stamps are rub-ons, so is the word hope. This is a rub-on, painty paper. This is one of those things I cut out from that catalog. I wanted it all to be about postage, miscellaneous postage things. And I want to put them in a book because they're just overrunning my um, overrunning my stamp. I have a, um, a collection of stamps and things, and it was just all kind of the same looking stuff. And I thought, well, it should go in a book together. My goodness, I didn't do a very good job. Keep opening it up after I glued it. Again, these are rub-ons. This is ephemera, and these are all the things from that catalog that I cut apart. This is embossed. That's a rub-on, 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 rub-on. Ephemera. Rub-ons, ephemera. And um, stamping, and that's from a catalog. Oh my goodness, they are stuck together. I had a lot of fun doing this little one with the postage thing. Okay, here we go. And look, 
See, it's come unglued off of the spine. I need to glue it back together again. There we go. There's a little teeny postage book. Okay, thanks for, for um, coming to see the flip throughs. I've been wanting to do them, but I've kind of got where I forgot I promised to do the flip throughs. But I wanted to show them all to you. And another time I'll come back and I'll do the large coffee book flip through. All right, thanks for watching. I can't get this on right now. It'll take me 10 minutes to get it on. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I appreciate all your, oh, I got it on, all your lovely comments that you guys leave. If you guys want to see something or want me to try to make something, you can leave that in the comment section also. And if I think I can do it, I'll, I'll give it a try. If I can't, I'll tell you I can't do it. But usually I, I try to make either one to four or one to five of the same thing. Everybody makes fun of me for doing it that way, but there's a reason why. The first one you do as your prototype and it always has an error in it. The second one you think you've improved on it. The third one you improve on the improvement and so on and so forth. And then usually about the fourth or fifth one, it's good. <laughs> All right, so that's it from me for today. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.